I got a seat here. Story time. So this story time is going to be half story time, half vlog, because I'm going to bring you with me my first night back taking call at the hospital. If you haven't checked out my other story time video, go check it out. It is about how I got into the RV lifestyle. A little bit of more about me. In my video on my home office space, I talked about the fact that I am an anesthesiologist and my group's practice focuses on elective outpatient procedures. Many, many moons ago, actually it's not as long ago as I think it is, uh, I used to be hospital based. So I used to take call, basically working a 24 hour shift covering labor and delivery, the ER and the ICU for emergencies as well. So I did that right after I finished my residency training when I, when I became what you would call an attending in the United States. An attending physician in the United States means you have completed undergrad, medical school, internship, and a residency right after graduation, remained in the typical hospital OR setting. And I enjoyed it. I learned a ton. I saw many emergencies, many codes, many crazy things in the ER, many crazy things overnight, and learned to pretty much handle just about every, any and every type of anesthetic situation. So back in the day, it was pretty much my norm, roaming the halls of the hospital at all hours of the night, pre oping patients, doing cases, placing epidurals and responding to emergencies, whatever was needed for the overnight anesthesiologist. Then as my daughter became older and I realized she needed me more at home, I decided to switch things up. So I left the hospital and joined a group that focused on elective surgeries. For some background, the outpatient setting and the hospital inpatient setting are two different entities. Outpatient elective procedures we have shorter cases. So you get there in the morning and you finish up your day. No overnights, no long nights, and most importantly, no weekends. It was time for me to leave that hospital setting and be there for the weekends and more consistently for my daughter. Our group focused on elective outpatient procedures. And with the shutdown, those cases pretty much came to a major slowdown and in some cases a grinding halt. Now I find myself with this whole COVID situation going back to the hospital. So a local community hospital found themselves short staff. They needed 24 hour coverage of an anesthesiologist. So to help out, I elected to take call and I'm gonna take you guys along with me. Now to start, there are generally two types of call coverage, 24 hours and 12 hours. Now I wasn't ready for 24 hour calls, so I took the 12 hour shift. Trust me, I knew what I was doing. The 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift. Now I did this strategically because the evening and overnight shifts at most community hospitals is usually pretty chill. Not back at the level one trauma hospitals where things tend to really pop off at night. So I had no reservations about this center because the pace was a bit slower. Well, here I am driving in my car in the evening and I am getting ready to do something that I have not done in over seven years. I'm about to take call at the hospital. That's pretty awesome. Let's see. First things Stops. first, no matter how many times you've been around there for orientation, you gotta figure out a way how to make it back to your locker room and how to get your scrubs. FYI, hospital scrubs, they just look like a potato sack on everyone. I don't know why, they just do. Now yes, the hospital, I know, I know, has plenty of its own hand sanitizer, but being the germaphobe that I am, I had to bring my own, because you never know what can pop off in the parking lot, just saying. Now obviously I can't take you with me, but the first part of taking over the overnight shift is getting report for the OR are labor and delivery and any cases put on the schedule for the next day luckily for me all the R cases were done and all the preoperative case reports were already done as well so it really took me no time to introduce myself as the oncoming anesthesiologist so I had to interview a patient who was most likely going to c-section later on that evening now since the case wasn't going immediately that gave me plenty of time to grab a bite to eat now trust me when you're the new face you're gonna get plenty of questions around the hospital yeah, yep. they have to be here. Someone has to be available 24 hours, and so they didn't have enough staff to do that. So we're just filling in some shifts. Well, they have enough people for regular time, but now they say they need an anesthesiologist 
available 24 hours in case they need help intubating patients. Because before they took call, as long as they were 30 minutes away, they were fine. But now they're saying they have to be in-house 24 hours and they don't have enough people to stay here. Well, just got back from the C-section. It is done out of the way. The rest of the night should be pretty quiet. Everyone that needs an epidural has one and they're now over there laboring very comfortably. Now, it wasn't all peaches and cream. The hardest thing for me personally going back to the hospital was now that all the charting was done on the computer or the electronic medical records as they call it. Now in my little sector of outpatient procedures, we're still using paper records because we cover so many different facilities and most of them are still on the paper system as well. Felt like the computer part took just as long as the anesthetic procedure, if not longer. So after the making the rounds, it's time to head back to the call room. This hospital generally doesn't have its physicians stay overnight, so they really don't even have call rooms. So basically, my makeshift kind of bootleg call room was an empty patient room on the postpartum ward. So the first thing you got to do, always check your call phone. You want to make sure that it's actually working, and it's very hard to explain why you weren't answering your phone because your battery was dead. Very rookie move. If you're taking call, your phone charger and extension cords are just, they're just essential. They're just an absolute must. They're right up there with your toothbrush. My sweet daughter, she made these chocolate chip cookies for me. And at this time, I was getting the munchies and I was not trying to find a snack machine. So these were right on time. Now, I'm not a TV person, so generally I bring something to read on my phone or some type of journal, just so self-reflection, making personal lists of things I need to get done. This is the time when you really miss home the most. I'm not the type to call at home and check in because it always makes me feel like, oh, woe is me. And it seems really silly to sit there and feel sorry for yourself. You know, there's people who are, you know, floors above you that have no choice but to be here because they're sick and scared. And I'm fortunate enough to be able to get up and leave first thing in the morning. So in the evening before I think about going to bed, I like to make one last round to make sure everything is all tucked in for the night. And it looks like everything is pretty much settled. So now it's time for me to get some rest. I don't care, no matter how many blankets I have, the cold always hits me right to the bone. And the next hardest thing for me really is the mattress. I have a pretty messed up back, so I know I'm gonna wake up sore as heck. All in all, I was fortunate enough to get five continuous hours of sleep. I seem to always wake up dazed and confused when I'm in a strange bed, so it usually takes me a minute. Unless someone's calling for me for emergencies and I can jump out of the bed in a second, like nothing happened. To be honest with you, I could have gotten an extra 45 minutes of sleep, but I always like to get up early the next morning because I want to post off and see all my patients that I did anesthesia for the day before, make sure everything is going okay and there's no complications. Pretty standard procedure. I also like to see what's going on on labor and delivery because I want to give the person coming on a complete picture of everything that's going on and you don't want there to be any surprises for the person that's coming on and you also don't want to know that stuff was going on that you don't even know about. It's a bad look. Then there's that sweet relief when the new person coming on relieves you and they've even showed up on time and you are on your way out. There's always that little prayer I do in the parking lot on my way to my car praying that I didn't get towed in the middle of the light, but that might just be me. This thingy off me. Whew. So I am in my car, trying to get warm. My hands warm before we start, and it was not nearly as bad. Now, mind you, I did have a fairly quiet night, just so after several years of not having to stay overnight at the hospital, I would describe my night as not horrible. It wasn't super busy, so I think that helped a lot. It gave me time to figure out how to work the computers, which I desperately needed because everything is electronic medical record. Sorry, I got distracted. There was a squirrel. Or EMR, if you have not heard. So I guess I am going to get out of here because people are starting to come and probably going to need this parking spot pretty soon. As all stars that you ever dreamed possible. Wouldn't that be But you know what? I'm not going to complain because it was just like riding a bike. And though I couldn't show you everything that I physically 
did patient related at the hospital, everything was pretty much the same and it came right back to me. It was just like riding a bike. So much so that when this is all over, I'm considering going back to the hospital setting. My daughter's getting older. She has one more year of school and she'll be going to college. So I'll have a little extra time on my hands. I've decided that after all this, I will be going back to the hospital setting soon. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching my video. Go ahead and subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you next time.